Now we're going to talk about the PR interval. The PR interval is that duration of time from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. So this includes atrial depolarization and the AV nodal pause. That PR segment, the PR segment is the flat portion from the end of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. So the PR interval incorporates or includes the P wave and the PR segment. Some things can alter this, such as an accessory pathway like Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome or Laun-Ganong-Levine syndrome, where you would get a shortened PR interval. What would that mean? So during the PR interval, you have that AV nodal pause. Why do we have the AV nodal pause? Well, the AV nodal pause allows the atria to fully contract and eject its blood into the ventricles. So you get more of that atrial kick and ventricular filling, optimizing that Frank Starling mechanism and subsequently cardiac output when you have a good AV nodal pause. So if you didn't have that AV nodal pause, like you may have with an accessory pathway such as WPW or LGL, you'll get conduction going right from the atria to the ventricles, so the depolarization will occur much closer. So you'll get atrial depolarization, ventricular depolarization right after each other without that pause, so you won't get uh, ventricular filling as good as you do with a good solid AV nodal pause. Now, what if it's too long? If that AV nodal pause is too long, you'll get what we call a prolonged PR interval or a first degree AV block. And that is the PR interval.